All right. Well, it's already 12 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to our uh, data portal lunch breaks. So today we're going to be talking about annotations, determinations, and nomenclatural changes in CCH2, a symbiota-based portal. And I wanted to break this down really into three main parts. So we want to talk about individual annotations, so how to add individual annotations or determinations to a specimen record, how to add batch annotations or determinations. We'll also talk about what is meant by nomenclatural changes at that point, and then we'll talk about printing annotations. So these are all uh, tools that are available in CSS2, uh, the Symbiota-based portal. So I'm going to switch on over to CCH2. Here I am, cch2.org. And uh, you need to obviously have editor access to a collection to be able to edit records and add annotations. But that is all you need. You don't need administrator permissions, just editor permissions. So you want to navigate to your data editor control panel, which would be going into my profile. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Occurrence management, and then the name of the collection that you are going to be editing. So for any individual specimen record, um, usually how I navigate to making edits for a record is going into edit existing occurrence records. And then you go to uh, whatever specimen record you want to look at. I'm just going to pick something randomly from around here. Okay. Oh, and great. I picked one that has a, an annotation that needs to be added. So annotations can be added for multiple reasons, um, whether something has been identified by a, an expert or maybe it's just been uh, changed due to a name change in that taxon. But in any case, uh, they can be added by going into the Determination History tab within the Occurrence Editor. So if I click Determination History, then all of the identifications of this specimen record should show up in this Determination History. However, it looks like this annotation was not correctly added, so I'm going to get rid of the, these data and kind of talk you through how I would add annotation data um, start to finish. So when you first enter a label, um, let's say we're digitizing this specimen record anew. So we have this data record or this specimen that already has label data and an annotation, but let's say it doesn't have any data already uh, or any taxonomic data. So then I want to enter the original taxon name here. And Voila, here we have, this is the original label data that is associated uh, with this specimen. So from now on, what I'm going to be showing is the same as if you were going to be adding uh, a new annotation, you know, later, two years later, 10 years later, um, from the original specimen identification. So then you would come up into the determination history tab. And you'll notice that the original determination is not actually listed on this page yet. And that's because there's no reason to have a determination history if the history is only the original identification. So the original identification is only going to show up as a, uh, a member of this list if there is more than one identification of that specimen. So this is a neat tool that if you go in to add a new determination or annotation. So this is fun. It's going to be on its side. I can rotate it here. So I can add my new annotation. And when you don't have any other annotations already added, it will uh, show up. This form will show up right here. If there was an annotation, then you could click the green add new determination plus sign. So at minimum, you need to fill out these yellow highlighted fields, scientific name, determiner, and date. If there is no determiner or date, then you can enter unknown for the determiner and s.d. for the date. 
However, I have all this information on my annotation label. So I'm going to go ahead and enter them. Flora, variety grand of flora. David J. Keel, 2009. And when I press tab now, this is going to automatically check this, make this the, the current determination box because this date is sooner than the collection date. If this date is not sooner than the collection date, then this box will not be automatically checked. So just keep, uh, keep track of that, especially if the determination and the collection took place at the same time, this might not automatically be checked. And what this box is, is it makes this annotation that you are adding the current determination. So the data from this identification is going to be placed onto the occurrence record and anyone looking at that occurrence record in the portal is going to see that identification information first. So because this is the most current determination, I'm going to keep that checked and then click Submit Determination. If this were something I was doing um, with not from the image, so I was annotating this and I wanted to do it straight in the database and then print my label, I could click this Add to Annotation Print Queue button and that would uh, enable me to print this annotation from the annotation label printer tool later. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the annotation print queue just to pretend that I needed to add that. I'm gonna click submit determination. And it takes a little bit of time, but now you will see that there are two identifications. So when I added the brand new identification, it automatically generated the previous determination, which was the original determination. So this current determination is highlighted as current determination. And if I go back into the occurrence data, those data from my determination are now in the latest identification box. So that's what checking that make this determination current box will do. If you need to edit a determination, you also go into the determination history tab and then you click the edit determination or pencil button. You can also um, delete determinations by scrolling down to the bottom and clicking delete determination. Or if you put it in the wrong order, then you can make this determination current by clicking this button in the green box too. You can make edits here. You can add references um, or notes as well. Um, qualifiers, so if that's if there's a CF or an AFF or something like that, you can put that right into the identification qualifier. Normally, the authorship will automatically populate, um, but because this is, um, I forget what the term is, but the same specific epithet as infraspecific epithet, that has only the, um, the original scientific names authorship and not an additional, additional infraspecific epithet authorship. So that's why you don't see it here, but it does exist in the back end. So it's just the authorship for this taxon right here. Okay, so that's how you add an individual um, annotation label. If you wanted to batch annotate a bunch of specimens, say, um, an entire genus has been transferred to another genus and you want to annotate all of your specimens to that genus. You could go back into your data editor control panel and uh, this is also something that a data editor can do. You do not need to be an administrator to do this. You go into add batch determinations or nomenclatural adjustments. And then you can either search for a certain catalog number or a certain taxon. So I really actually should have kept that old record. All right, I'm gonna take this catalog number, keep it in my notes here. So if I wanted to look for this one along with a bunch of others, I could say, okay, add this record to the list. I could add the next one to the list. So this would be really useful if you have the stack of specimens in front of you and you can just um, scan them using a barcode scanner. 
Alternatively, you can search for a taxon. And then you can add records to the list. And once they're in this list, you can also take them off the list. So you can select and deselect specimens. Say I only wanted to annotate these two, then I could just check those and then enter all the annotation information. Similarly to on that determinations tab, um, just right here. And so the difference between an identification adjustment and a nomenclatural adjustment is the difference between uh, someone looking at each individual specimen and deciding that it really is that taxon or, um, or just when a scientific name changes, then the herbarium is kind of doing the curatorial task of changing the scientific names for that taxon as a whole. So you can change to nomenclatural adjustment because then it's talking about um, not someone specifically looking at that specimen. And it also adds the current date. And you can also add this to the annotation print queue kind of in batch so that you could make all these annotations in the database and print them all out and put them all um, on your specimens. So if you go to your, if you want to print these annotations, you go to, again, the collection management panel, and then you go to print annotation labels. And here we are, we see uh, this specimen that I added earlier, and as well as one that I probably added for another test reason or another. And you can select or deselect all of these specimens. You can add a header, you can print the catalog number on that annotation label. Um, you can add a footer as well. And if we print in browser, well, that's going to be way too big, but um, order width. You can just fiddle around with it and decide how big you want it. Or you can export it to a Word document and print it from there. So a couple of options you can fiddle with here to print these. Um, it's not a super sophisticated annotation printing tool. I, I'm pretty sure it's in development still, but uh, that's how you can add and edit and batch add and print annotation labels. So I think there might be some questions in the chat. What is sort sequence on annotation? So I believe that is the sequence in which the um, the annotations will sort when you're looking at it on the page, but I will go investigate and see what that looks like. Actually, I should just go to this one. Feel free to enter any other questions that you have in the chat, or you can unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, I think it's just how they appear on this page, Don. So this one is showing up first because it was earlier than this 2009 one. Other questions, things that you want to be able to do with determinations and annotations. Can I just verbally ask? I was starting to chat it, but yeah, go for it. So I'm a new curator. And we are, uh, I've put it off a while, but I have to do some kind of biggish synonymy changes. And doing the batch changes is scaring me that I'll like make some large batch mess up. So could you like reassure me in some way about how, like if I mess up, I can undo it <laughs> or maybe show us a batch one that you mess up and then how, you, how you're how you gonna fix it? <laughs> that is a good question. Well, I will tell you that for a front end user, it is not necessarily easy to batch delete annotations, um, but that's why you have a portal management team. You can contact me and I can go into the database and batch delete stuff. So it's not that big of a headache for, for me or your other portal managers. But all changes, all changes that you make in the user interface are tracked in some way. And so everything, if not, 
close to everything, if not everything, can be reversed. Is there things we can sort of pay attention to while we're doing it so we don't actually make a mess? Well, when you're Is looking at that, trick? if when you're looking at that list of things that you want to annotate, you just want to make sure that all the ones that you certainly want to annotate are checked. So, and maybe doing it in relatively small batches is a good idea. So just do one taxon at a time, not the entire genus, you know, just maybe one species at a time. Um, and that way you can be a little bit more assured that if you make a mistake, it's only going to apply to a subset of your data. Okay, I guess that makes me feel better. Okay. Can I, yeah, can you I change gears? Hey, yeah. Katie. Um, so I, um, I'm work. I'm not working with CCH2. I'm working with Oregon Flora. So um, I don't want to muck up the waters because I know no worries. It's system is biota. slightly different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, you know, we're setting up our workflow and uh, we're um, instructing students currently to, uh, you know, they, we're, we're imaging and then we're, um, having our workers uh, transcribe the entire specimen all at once. So mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of our specimens do have annotations. And so some of them, um, you know, uh, when they do have an annotation or in any case, um, we're instructing workers to start uh, in the determination history and add the determinations there and then go back and, and fully transcribe the record and skip the latest uh, identification section um, because it's already been done in the um, determination history. And so um, I'm not saying that's the right way to do it, but uh, one reason that we are having workers do it that way is because uh, at least in our system, we noticed that the uh, occurrence data form, it has to be, um, Physically, you have to click save. If you if you go over if you if you toggle between those two tabs, the um, determination history tab and the occurrence data tab, um, you're you're in danger of not having your um, any edits that you made in determination history saved. And it's yeah, always a bummer. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. So we've had this happen where people will enter all the data, flip over to the next tab, save the determination, come back and be like, "Where's all my data?" You have to save things between tabs. They are not one universal save button. There's a yeah. save button for each tab. So right. that's a really interesting way to, to go about that. I would say if that works for your people, go for it. Um, the one detriment to that is that you don't get that automatic generation of the original determination. So they just have one more determination to add manually every time they have to enter determination. Right, and that was something else I, wa I wanted to ask about. Um, and I, I saw you do it, um, how it the, you, you guys are um, adding the uh, latest identification in the um, occurrence data form. Then you're going over to the determination history and, um, and then, it brings looks like it's bringing in automatically bringing in your original determination um, record from the latest identification in the occurrence data form, right? Well, yes, so, but we only put the original label identification in the field to begin with, and then we enter in the latest identification via the, the determinations. Yes, right, right, right. But when you are in the um, determination history tab. Um, and you add your latest annotation and um, save that record, uh, then it automatically brings in whatever you entered in the um, for in the occurrence data form. So yeah. that what this is something we've been having, I've been struggling with, like what's going on? Why is it like <laughs> um, so that if something, so this this helps me because it's it tells me if there was um, already something entered in the latest identification um, in the occurrence data form, that it will automatically be brought in um, to the determination as a determination history record. So not to re-enter that. Exactly. Yeah, and if the original label has a determiner on it, because sometimes they do have separate determiners, yeah. 
then that information will be ported over to. It's only if it's uh, left blank that it will say unknown in SD by default. And um, can you tell me something quick? I don't want to waste everybody's time, but uh, where is the data in the latest identification uh, section of the occurrence data form? Where is that stored? Is that stored separately from the determination history? Um, I'm sorry, where's the latest, latest identification versus? Yeah, yeah, in the occurrence data form, in that latest identification section, mm -hmm. whatever somebody enters there, is that stored somewhere other than the determination rest of the determination history data? Yeah, so in the SQL database, that is in the OM occurrences table. Okay. So the okay. original occurrences tables, that, that's where that goes. And then all subsequent determinations and the original one, if there's more than one, those go into the um, OM determinations or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's helpful. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Josh, you have a question. Yeah, so <clears throat> as a user of a different collection, not necessarily an editor, um, are we able to search on earlier determinations and how can we export the determination history? That is a good question. And you cannot search by past identifications but you can view past identifications um, both through the just public display and also by downloading. So to view it through the public display, uh, let's see, this one does have an annotation. So I could go to uh, public display and it will show up below here, although this annotation wasn't entered correctly. So let's go look at my what I just did. So in my public display, you'll see there's a determiner and then there is a determination history and that will show up again in the public display. Um, if you wanted to download determination history, then you'll want to, let's just say I want all of Chico's copies. You go to either table or list hey, display. Hey, she can spell a Schultzia without hesitating. <laughs> well, uh, I did a lot of research on a Schultzia, so. Um, so then you can go into download the Darwin Core archive. And I think Symbiota Native might work too, but you can include the determination history. And when you do that, Your file will look like this, and then identifications will be a separate file. And that can be a little bit tricky because um, it isn't immediately in the same file that all the rest of the data is. Instead, they're linked to one another by this core ID. So you can see that there are two identifications on this one specimen. Um, so what you would have to do is find this core ID in the occurrences file, and occurrences means main specimen data, and then identifications is all the subsequent identifications. And there's that specimen here. So you would have to do a little bit of um, data wrangling to adjoin this one, uh, one occurrence record with the two identifications with which it's associated. Okay, yeah, that that's because the tables are not the same dimensions. Exactly, yeah, it's a one-to-many relationship. So you would have to have like, I don't know, identification one, identification two, and, and that's just not part of it right now. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Any other questions? Can we contact uh, you later with oh, questions? <laughs> absolutely, yep. You have my email address um, and I am here to help. Allison, do you have a question? Yeah, do you, is there a tutorial uh, video on the what you showed us as well? I I might mm, need to look at it. There <laughs> might 
There might be some in a previously recorded data entry webinar. Um, and so that would probably be on the Capturing California's Flowers website. So if you look in there under, um, I'll just go ahead and share my screen and look there. Under resources, either under document library um, or data portal tutorials, we have our big old fat data portal handbook. This is also where the data portal lunch breaks uh, recordings will be posted. Um, and then in our document library, it has a list of individual documents too. Oh, so today's tutorial will be posted. That it will be. In. Yes, yeah. exactly. With all my dumb questions in it too? You know it. I guess so. They're great <laughs> oh boy. questions, Allison. <laughs> Thanks. Great tutorial. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for attending. And uh, I will keep in touch if you have any more questions. And this recording will be posted uh, probably later today. Take care, everyone. Thank you.